What's up all my Power Addicts crew? Today we're talking about tread right tires. Now, yes, it's going to be a bit of a review, but it's also going to be a little bit educational like I always do my videos because what had happened, I got these tires, I've got a little over a thousand miles on, so I could definitely tell you a, a solid review on these things. Love them. They're awesome tires. But what had happened is a lot of my friends started realizing, hey man, those are cool tires you got on your Jeep now. Those are cool. I like those. Then they'll get to looking at them, they'll notice that right there. Remold in the USA. That started creating questions. Now what do I mean by remold? Their remold consists from bead all the way around the bead. All new rubber all the way around. Sweet. So, let's talk a little bit about that. Treadride has five different processes to create these monsters you see here. Step number one, you got to do the inspection of the old tires that they receive. What they do is they do a visual inspection first, be sure there's no visible gouges in the belts going penetrating all the way through the tire. They'll inspect the inside and outside, then they'll put it up on this machine and they'll run an electrical current through the surface of the tire. <laughs> now let's think about this. If you guys know what the bug zappers are, you know those things you hang up on the porch and the uh, bug gets into it, the thing, that's what happens. As they run this electrical, cur electrical current through the tire and passes the current through the belts, if there's a bad spot in the belt somewhere, it makes a zap sound. Really cool. Want to check out a video? Check this out. Well, we only let the highest quality used tire be remolded, so our first step is to inspect the tire and make sure it's a good quality casing. Right now, he's running the um, electrical current through the head of this uh, probe, and it's gonna find a nail hole in the crown if there's any penetration. So it'll arc and let him know that there's... What was that? <laughs> <laughs> he just found a tire that can't be re remolded. Really? So he found a problem with this particular tire. What do you think that could be? It could be anything, I guess. Um, it's gonna be a puncture in the crown. Ah, so you know that this is not a candidate for, for remolding. No. And every tire goes through this process, so you know that every tire that gets out to a consumer is in, in great shape. It's in great shape. Next step is the buffing process. What's the buffing process? That's where they remove material from bead to bead to prep the tire for the new rubber that's gonna be applied. Let's go ahead, I'll show you real quick. But well, what they did after they did the visual inspection, when they did the buffing process, they spin the tire, they take a blade, like a mill, and they'll shave right through here, and they go all the way around the tread, leaving a specific amount left to not get into the, the belts inside there. Because the belts are got their own style, kind of rubber that holds the belts, it's the individual strands inside there that holds all that together. So they leave that rubber to keep the integrity and strength of the internal belts. Wow, check this out. Now this is cool. This is really cool. This is an automatic buffer. It'll buff each tire specifically to a specific measurement. Um, and it does it consistently every time. And that's what gives our tires the quality of a new tire when you're on the highway or on the trails. After inspection, after buffing, comes laying down the brand new rubber from bead all the way around the bead. The sidewalls get a laminate of um, uncured rubber. Then they'll take a wrap brand new rubber on the top right here. It's not a recap where they just take and lay a new section through here. A remold, bead to bead remold, does it from here all the way around. So Tread Right uses the exact same process of a brand new tire. So what are you getting? You're getting a brand new tire. They're just reusing the casings from the inside, saving you money, saving junk get thrown in the landfill. That is a win-win for everybody. So here's a little snippet video showing how they wrap the new rubber. Station, this is where we're gonna apply the uh, rubber veneer to our sidewall of our bead to bead tires. So this is bead to bead, so you've taken off all of the markings on this particular tire. We have. Um, we've taken only about two thirty seconds of an inch off your sidewall. Because <laughs> we wanna, we're not gonna touch the, like just like the top, we're not gonna touch the plies in your sidewall. It's just roughly buffing off the surface to give it a good texture for the new veneer to adhere to. We put uncured rubber on our tire, and this is what make a re makes a remold. It's one continuous ribbon of rubber that hasn't cured yet, so it doesn't have. And the I can touch this, right? You can touch this. <laughs> this stuff you can touch. Wow. So it doesn't have the properties of a cured rubber, like a rubber ball or yeah. your tires. Um, it's not resilient. It's gummy. That's what makes the remold. Uh, this is going to be molded into your new tread pattern. After inspection, after buffing, 
After wrapping the brand new rubber around it comes the remold curing process. What they do is they take this big beast right here, they put a tube inside this at 150 psi to support the side walls and to support the tread surface. You can see right here where the mold comes together encases the tire all the way around, heats up to 300 plus degrees for 68 minutes to cure the tire out. That's where the tread mold comes in like this, and then the side molds come in right here to heat all this rubber up to cure it out. Horse poop not included. So this tire has just finished its curing process. So this is actually the same tire we just saw over there. That we put veneer on, yeah? That you put veneer on, and this is what comes out. This is what comes out. Um, totally. Look at the look at the tread. Oh, that's look at that. That is warm, isn't it? It is nice and warm. You need heat, uh, you need pressure, and you need time to cure a tire. Wow. So they get up to a little over 300 degrees um, for 68 minutes. It takes to cure this particular tread, and um, we have 150 pounds of pressure inside the tube. It's the same curing process that they use to make new tires. After inspection, after buffing, after wrapping brand new rubber around that tire, then after the remold, there's one more process to make sure you get a quality tire. And that's they take that tire out of the mold, they spin balance that baby to make sure it is balanced to the standards they, they require. And I can tell you from experience, which you'll see here in just a little bit, because I had the privilege of the shop that I was working with, they allowed me to go into the shop and uh, video the process of them mounting the tires, balancing the tires. All four tires took two ounces or less to balance. For a 35 inch tire, people, that is absolutely awesome. One last final inspection, we'll clean all the excess rubber off. We'll clean off the uh, vents and we'll also balance it and make sure it will fit your vehicle. The manufacturing process to create the new tread and the new sidewalls is exactly like the brand new tire manufacturers do. So there is, should be no question about the quality of these tires. They rock, seriously. Uh, this is a bit of a review video for this, but I'm also giving you the education of how they're built. So therefore, any questions that may come about, hey, are these tires you know, safe? Stuff like that, yeah, these tires are no problem. They're, uh, they're actually really good tires. As far as their performance capability, welcome to Tennessee. I had snow, rain, and good weather within about a week and a half span. And the snow included ice. So I can tell you firsthand, within that short period of time, that, okay, in the rain, I had some pretty heavy rain at a time or two, and these, walked right through that rain with no problem. The puddles, no hydroplaning. Did absolutely excellent in the rain. Actually, I'm getting rained on right now. If you guys can see my camera, I have plastic wrap around it. Uh, so also, the snow did excellent in the snow. And the way the tread pattern is made on these guard dogs, is, which is what this particular model of uh, tread rod tire is called, the way the um, tread is built, they locked into that snow very well and did great. Now, it's all snow on the highway, I was going to come up here on this farm I'm on right now, play a little bit while it snowed, but I got to come up a big old huge massive hill and the um, police up here had that hill shut off, so I wasn't able to get up here and do any kind of a good snow play footage. Sorry, I really wanted to and I was going to, but they had both accesses at the top of this hill shut off and the people who live up here were the only ones who are allowed to pass up through here, so sorry. So again, snow was great, rain was great. Now. Let's get on uh, ice. Ice is ice, okay, straight up. In Tennessee, we get a lot. We get some snow, but we get a lot more ice more than anything. And the roads get crazy slick. They did. They actually did really well on ice, as well as you could. Now I've had some other mud tires in the past on big trucks, and even this Jeep right here. And these these tread rides actually still perform better than the past mud tires I've had before. Now dry pavement. Uh, going down the road, one thing about a big mud tire, they tend to want to walk on you a little bit. You know, some do, some don't. These laser straight, no problems whatsoever. Uh, noise, mud tires do produce noise, okay? Nature of the beast. But in the past tires I've had, the noise was a lot louder and a lot deeper toned than the noise these produce. They're not loud by my standards by any stretch. The tires I've had in the past were a lot louder than these, so. I've got no issues with these tires whatsoever. And like I just said, my future projects, I would I would definitely run another set. No questions at all. So, you see the manufacturing process? I gave you my verbal review face-to-face -face right here. So let's get a little bit of that live footage I was telling you about. Showing me driving in the snow on the highway, me getting in the rain. So, enough of the Gavin. Here we go, Brittany. Hey.
is just a lady right here. I've known her since like birth. And the tire just seated. And she chose to grow up to be a female mechanic. And she kicks it, she rocks it. She'll be on some of my later videos. So let's keep an eye on these tires and mount these babies up. For big rollers like them, uh, that's not bad for a big set of tires like that. Not at all. Yeah. yeah. Tires that size, dude, the balance of life. Here we go with a little bit of rainy day wet road video. The speed you see here, I'm running at about 45 miles per hour or so, which is the speed limit for this particular road. There were places where the water was built up in the road. Notice they call it ponding or puddling or whatever the case may be. Some of the places I hit had quite a bit of water standing. As I went through the standing water, I had no issues with hydroplaning. Also, the stopping and taking off traction was great as well. These tires do a great job in the rain. Now let's move on to the snow. It just started snowing. I thought I would jump out and get a quick pick of the tread pattern of the tread right guard dog tires. Notice the tread pattern is symmetrical, meaning that it is the same across the whole footprint of the tire. What is different about these tires versus other mud tires I've owned is the center lugs. Notice the center lugs on these tread rights have a groove right through the middle of them, whereas most other mud tires have solid lugs. This added groove in the center of that um, middle lug aids in snow, ice, and wet road, uh, wet road conditions. As a bonus for the 4x4 rigs that go out rock crawling, 
that, those extra grooves in that center lug right there will aid in the flexing of the tire to grab hold of those rocks to help you climb better. Now make sure you subscribe to my channel where later on in the summer I will create another video updating the performance of the these tires on the trails and rocks. So be sure to subscribe. Now what would be the odds of me doing a review on tires and I would get rain, warm weather, and snow within a week? Really? Welcome to Tennessee weather. We got ourselves a good snow going on finally. We've been just trying to justify all the cold weather we've been having. And just to let you know that the tread rights are doing an excellent job. This road is pretty slick. Uh, stopped. No issues. Of course, you always got to be careful on snow and ice, no matter what kind of tire you're running. But uh, had no issues. I mean, as long as I was applying the brakes softly like you should do on ice to begin with, stopped no problem. everyone hope y'all learned a little something I wanted to explain to you guys what the process was in which I did that I gave you guys a little bit of a uh, on the road footage to see how well they perform promise you the sweet tires they really are so everyone I really hope you enjoyed that video if you did hit me with that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't you know down in the description below this video I'll put a link to tread rights uh, website where you can go check out the di different various sizes they have okay so just go check them out. They got different tread patterns, different sizes. They got pretty decent selection of light truck SUV type tires. So pretty cool. So everyone again, hit me with that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and comment down below. Give me some good stuff. Give me some educational stuff to help everyone out. How's that? Sweet, sweet. Peace out. Later, y'all.